Board Special. Katrina, one of the goals is to reduce the number of people in jail in prisons with mental illness. It's a huge problem across the country. Bernalillo County is part of the Stepping Up Initiative, which is a national initiative to try to do that. Is this whole effort with the Behavioral Health Initiative and the extra funds going to work towards that goal? Well, it's not specifically aimed um, at the criminal justice population. What we've learned through this is that, you know, the Stepping Up Initiative, we've got to do a lot of prevention to make sure that this doesn't continue to happen and we've got to have stabilizations and supports in our community to stabilize individuals no matter if they're coming from the hospital or from the jail or incarceration. So these these initiatives are really based in um, community settings to stabilize those things but certainly we have been working very hard on the stepping up initiative and one of our goals is to get individuals who have mental health the treatment that they need um, in the criminal justice system. So they get screened while they're in there and get the help they need. They get the help they Need. And certainly the Resource Reentry Center is going to be a big factor in identifying these individuals and, and getting some services for our priority populations in service in, in the community. Jim, I wanted to talk with you about the NM Crisis Line yes. that went into effect a few years ago. Why is this so important and how will it affect this goal of trying to keep people out of jail who have mental illness? It's, <clears throat> it's so important because <clears throat> it's a got two or three things. One is it's the fastest way to get to a uh, behavioral health specialist. It's uh, manned by master's level clinicians. You can get hold of someone within a few, few well, less than a minute, I think. So someone's like, point. my son is, says voices in his head, he's throwing things around. Right, okay. and so they can get you in, in contact with resources. But <clears throat> it's also important because we hope that uh, in the future, as people learn learn more about it, they'll call 911 less and go to a New Mexico Crisis and Access Line. And <clears throat> the New Mexico Crisis and Access Line will be able to send out, I think, community engagement teams, be able to, you know. Instead and, of just and the police possibly rolling up necessarily. Eventually the crisis uh, mobile crisis teams depending on how things go with the police and, and that sort of thing. So that's sort of the vision for the future. But what's important is people start using New Mexico Crisis and Access Line. Doug, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute because sure. you're from the city of Albuquerque. Yeah. We're, we've been talking about culture change in the police department as yes. well. Now, you know, a lot of police are not prepared to deal with people with mental illness. It gets kind of, they're the default people Correct. who deal with it. Do you see these efforts with the mobile crisis team, with the crisis line, helping towards this goal of, of de-escalating these encounters and maybe lessening? No, these I encounters? absolutely do. I think that's at the root of all the things that we're trying to achieve. If we're going to have less people show up in jail, we're going to have less people show up at our psych emergency rooms, we're going to have less encounters with the police, and we want those encounters that do have to happen to be uh, more positive in terms of their outcome. And so to that end, the Albuquerque Police Department has stepped up their training of their uh, force. Every single officer gets at least 40 hours of crisis intervention training. Um, it starts at the academy, and then there's about 40% of those officers that will receive what's called an extra uh, intensive uh, uh, crisis intervention training and they will be the ones that will be partnered with our crisis intervention specialists that when they go to a house and are responding to somebody in crisis that they'll be able to make sure the scene is safe and then turn it over to the clinician to handle it from that point forward. And so their goal is to ultimately, like we spoke about earlier, is maybe not even have to show up at some point. I mean, that, that is at the end of the day where they want, want to go with it. And they've been very active with this in, a, in visiting other communities to see how they're doing it as mm -hmm. well. So the, the police department and their role now and how they're carrying out their, their job is significantly different today than it was even two years ago. Okay, thank you all for staying talking about this. Appreciate it.